Joining us in the Informa studio, someone who um, we've heard about for the better part of the last 40 years. Um, started and spent something like 20 years in the police force. Then was, uh, I suppose, Victoria's first Racing Integrity Commissioner back in 2010. His name is Sal Perna, joins us in the studio. Uh, Sal, it's been a remarkable career, filled with uh, commendations, with a number of awards over the years, a, a host of different accolades. You are on the board and you represent so many di different businesses these days, but finally you can say, I've finished my commitment to the racing industry. Oh, yeah, thanks, stopped yeah. last week. Yeah, Monday. Uh, that was, yeah, wow, so fresh. <laughs> so, how does it, so how does it feel? Um, I don't think it, it, it's hit home yet. Yes. Uh, it, it's kind of like having a week off. Um, next week and the week after will probably be more telling than this week. Wow. So take us back to the early days, the origins of Salperno. Uh, Dad arrived from Italy in the, what, late 40s, early 50s? Correct, yeah. Um, he and Mum... Uh, with their families, uh, weren't together when they first came to Australia. They were post-war Italian immigrants and uh, I guess that was the basis for always striving to end up in a role that made them proud. Correct. Uh, yeah. You know what it was like. Yeah, absolutely. Blue collar versus white collar. Uh, I had Catholic school education because they wanted me to make sure that I understood their roots uh, and I always thought okay, well, I, I want to do something that'll make them proud, a nice job, a clean job, I'm going to be an accountant. <laughs> you didn't end up being an accountant. <laughs> what happened? I was really lucky because uh, <laughs> in about year, or form five as it was in year 11, we had a, a career guidance counsellor come to the school uh, at St. Joseph's in North Melbourne. Uh, we went through all the questionnaires individually and, and he came back and he said, what do you want to do? And I said, I'm studying economics and accountancy. And he asked me why and I gave him the same answer. Uh, and he said, it won't suit you. Uh, you need to do something that you can impose your personality in, you can enjoy, you can have a passion that's, about. That's, that's quite remarkable. It was, it was Astute. Absolutely. And he was a re careers advisor. Correct. As we had all those years ago. Correct. Do they still exist? I, I think they do, but not quite as raw but as how good, what, what a great What a great insight that he saw that that was a part of your character. And where did it drive you straight away and say, police? Well, it was, it's kind of, uh, you know how when you get to, to, to my age, you start to ref, reflect. Reflect, yeah. So that was probably the, the first... Inkling. Yes, that okay. was the first thing. But okay. the, the second thing that happened, which was probably the more important and relevant one, was um, at that stage, we were living in Clifton Hill yep. uh, in a housing commission. So state. you'd moved from Collingwood to Clifton Hill. Correct. Okay. Went over the... But you still had, this, you still had the, the, uh, the, the, the black and white stripes. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I was even closer to Victoria Park. So. <laughs> <laughs> that is, that's rare air. It is. For, for Collingwood people, that's a shrine, is it not? Absolutely. I landed there in a helicopter years and years and years ago. And uh, it was a novel way to arrive. And let me Very tell lame. you, I was, I was reminded, uh, you know, who do you think you are, Janine? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and as a Carlton supporter, you're lucky to get Correct. Got out alive. Why do you think I got out there in a helicopter? <laughs> well, so, it, it, so take us back to Clifton Hill. I was sitting on the front um, fence. Yep. And um, I, I watched a neighbour over the road pulling up at the front of his house. And... He was a, I was probably 16, 17 at that stage. Yeah. He was probably 18, 19, but we didn't know each other. Right. And he pulled up, he had a, an EH Holden. As they were. Uh, yeah. With resonators, I think you <laughs> call them, which are, with, with a nice sound to it. Yes. So yes. I, I, my attention was drawn and he pulled up. Did they exceed the decibel <laughs> <laughs> level that we, we allowed? More likely than not. Yeah, yeah. Than not. Yeah. And, and Clifton Hill wasn't gentrified at that stage. Correct. It was pretty rough and raw. Um, and he got out and I noticed he had what looked like a uniform, you know, the dark blue pants, a light blue shirt, dark blue tie, but, and a cardigan over the top of that. Right. So I couldn't quite... Sort him out. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And he looked over at me and waved. Yep. Um, and he, he went inside and I was still sitting out there, probably playing with my brothers and sisters, yep. whatever. Yep. And he came over. He changed into jeans and a t-shirt and he said, g'day, my name's Paul. We started right. talking. And I asked him what he did because I said, you, 
he looked like he'd wearing a uniform mm. and he went on to tell me he was a, a police officer ah. and he worked at Collingwood. Gotcha. And then the conversation just started um, and you know what it's like. What are you going to do with yourself? Exactly. Young male. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And all of a sudden I had this new window mm. that I'd never looked through before about law enforcement. Yes, I thought, yes. Yeah. That sounds really fascinating. Went back to school, did my uh, form six or year yes. 12. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And at the end of it, I applied uh, to do uh, accounting at, at a couple of uh, unis. Uh, and then I thought, well, just as a backstop, I applied for the Commonwealth Public Service, State Public Service and Victoria Police. You covered your bases. I did. Yeah. And the police were the first to write back. Wow. Well, so yeah, this is that's a, interesting. A November yeah. mm. of that final year, which mm -hmm. was 72 of schooling. They wrote back very quickly. I went and did all the medical things. Uh, and then there were some written things that I had to do. And by well, February, I was behold. a police cadet. Wow. So, and I was still 17 and for four or five months. So that's how young I was. Now, you said to me before we started the interview that it was a great lesson in life, great opportunity. Uh, it threw you in, it taught you so many things. Uh, reflecting back, still, you still feel that way? Yeah, absolutely. I, I think, um, you know, the, 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 all those sayings about opp opportunity only knocks once, but you've got to be there to hear, hear the knock, yeah. seize the opportunity. Yeah. And, and I guess that, for me, that was a pattern of life from seeing how hard mum and dad had worked and people in that era. It was just non-stop. So when you get the opportunity, go for it. And the other thing there, there was a career path and Correct. it was multi-layered and you went undercover. You, is there anything you didn't do at the police force? No. Um, you went from commissioned officer, you went right through, did you not? Yeah. Undercover, detective inspector, I think, Yeah. before you uh, went on and did other things? Yeah. I, I did two things, George, that, uh, not two things, I went back to the same place twice. One was homicide. Right. Because I was just fascinated by major investigation work. Oh, it is. It, it's, it's incredibly... Just, yeah. Um, it draws you in. If you have that... That lust for to learn or or find out something, it's incredibly. I've I've spoken to others, and we've had great friends of ours who've been in the police force in New South Wales, and uh, Sergeant Ron Edwards was one of the great guys who was part of the, our extended family, and um, he was thorough. He was a gentleman, uh, strong, uh, always had my father's back, which was a tremendous thing, and they were more than uh, you know. Uh, customers and, uh, and, and, and uh, they used to have their cars served with us, but they, we, they were extended family. And they, they gave us a lot of support, which was key at that time, yeah. because the ethnic communities were finding themselves, they were learning to uh, acclimatise. Uh, um, uh, I suppose there was a little integration going on, some would say assimilation, but Australia was finding out about uh, immigra immigration too. What did, what did they, what was it like in the police force, were you Sal Perno, or did you have to change your name? Was it Salvatore? Uh, uh, what was it in those early days? Yeah, the uh, the, the name part of it uh, happened before then because ah. Salvatore it was very hard for the Aussie kids. Correct. So that became Salvatore. Yeah. It became Salva. Yeah. And then Sal. Sal. And then Sal. So, so there's not much so, left. So when, when was uh, so we've gone from. Collingwood to Clifton Hill. How, how, by Clifton Hill, was it Salvatore? Oh, no, it was Sal. Sal by then. Sure okay. <laughs> yeah, by then. So Collingwood had sorted it out. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, wow. So the name was, which is kind of strange because it was such an unusual name anyway. Yeah. Uh, very difficult to get your mouth around. And yep. my second name is Mario. Oh, okay. So for people to have a Salvatore Mario, it just didn't work. So Sal worked and stuck forever. Mario Milano came to me and said to me, I want you to do my documentary. And we were on that path to do it. So he was a magnificent uh, gentleman <laughs> and, a, and a specimen. And, and, there's, and there's a Sunday ritual when you're an Italian family correct. living in Collingwood and Clifton Hill. Go to Mass at 11, yep. rush home correct. so you can get there for 12 o'clock World Championship Wrestling correct. with Jack Little. Yep. And let's hope that Mario Milano's birthday gift doesn't get smashed by Skull Murphy on the day. Correct, correct, correct. <laughs> so what a time, what a time. Yeah. And what did, you, what, what did you, reflecting, what did you make of Melbourne at that time? Um, you were enriched, you were excited, you had a new career. Yeah, I, look, I think, I think it was really tough. And, and you know, we've spoken before about, um, 
it being a very territorial uh, environment. So Smith Street, Collingwood, you right. stayed on your side. The Fitzroy boys would stay on their side. Victoria Street, Richmond, the same. Uh, and you lived your life within that. But you knew if you worked hard, you had a decent life. That, that's what that was about. And I also believe, I'm Port Melbourne, I'm, I live at Port Melbourne, I also knew that unless you, you didn't travel to Port Melbourne unless you had an invitation. Yeah. <laughs> but imagine you and that full journey throughout the police force, 20 odd years, a tremendous um, opportunity to learn so many different things and access to so many different parts of the community. Yeah? Exactly. Uh, that gave you, that would have held you in great stead in business. And of course, in 2010, when the government of the day came, they said, Sal, the, the racing industry needs some support, needs some help, we need you there. How did that come about? Yeah, and I, I think you, you, you've hit the nail on the head because all of that time in policing meant uh, dealing with a very, very broad cross-section of society. Really nice people, yep. really bad people. Yep. And every aspect of life, the good parts, the bad, part, the bad parts, um, having to uh, work through complex situations, having to engage with people. Um, you know, one of the things I say about policing is it, it teaches you to form judgments and make decisions. You're doing it all the time, every whether day. You, whether you like it or Absolutely. not, it happens automatically. Absolutely. And some with very severe consequences. Oh, yes. You know, do I pull the gun? Do I not? Do I decide on taking someone's liberty? Do I not? You also understand what consorting means very quickly, don't you? Absolutely. Yeah? Do. And, the, and the ramifications. And you say to Jake King, Jake, don't go with those boys because it's going to hold you. And, and yet some people do it. Yeah. And um, it's, it's, uh, it's a very difficult thing. I remember doing a documentary uh, at Ramwick Racecourse. And I remember one of uh, the later Andrew Ollie saying to me, the greatest uh, example of Australia is the bedding ring. They're all there, from the littlest crim to the biggest crim to the brightest and, and uh, most talented. They're all in there. And all you've got to do is watch. Yeah. So you would have seen it all. Yeah, and I think that's what, uh, I think that's what the government of the day were looking for because they'd had a, a review that they'd conducted because of a couple of mm -hmm. catalysts. Um, and they wanted someone who could be independent of government and independent of the racing industry, who could bring to it a bit of knowledge about the law, a bit of knowledge about investigation, a bit of knowledge um, about stakeholder engagement and, and an ability to work through a complex set of scenarios, but not have, you know, a foot in the game. Yeah, skid in the game. Yeah, yeah, yeah And yeah, I was yeah. lucky. I had the law enforcement, I had uh, the corporate side with 11 years at Australia Post, uh, three and a bit years at Telstra and then started my own business. I was, I was going to say, that's another dimension to your story, which yeah. is even richer. You were brought in uh, to the biggest organisations in Australia, Australia Post, yeah. as it was then, yeah. and Telstra, as yeah. it was starting to morph and evolve and become this you know, incredibly uh, complex, complicated company. Yeah. And you were there doing all their security and, and everything else that goes with it. Yeah. And, and that, was, that was another learning step because it was how do you deal with a complex situation outside a law enforcement environment where you've got power, you've got authority, you can do what you need to do, but in a corporate world it's different. And issues like, for example, I'd never had to worry about industrial relations when I was in policing. Correct. You wanted to arrest someone, you did it. Correct. In the corporate world, you've got to think about what's the ramifications. Yes. Will there be a strike? Will they walk out? How do you deal with that in a way that's not going to upset it? So at Post, for example, if I had the information about someone who was stealing something you had to go through through the, the mail, union, did you not? Well, you had to engage with them because it was very important. You didn't yes. want to stop 19 million articles of mail going through the system. Ask Miss Ms. Holgate, who had that problem recently. And, it, and it, they were high profile organisations who had major stakeholders, i.e. Commonwealth Government. and huge organisation, so you had to build on the things that I learned in policing mm. with engaging with people, getting to know people, understanding, but learning. And that's the, that's the two things I've really carried right through. I love learning and, and I love uh, being involved in the development of people. Now, you're semi-retired, which I don't like that expression at all. I don't believe we ever retire. But I think you're, you're going to continue to learn because it's, I think it's in you. I can see it. 
um, that career assessor all those years ago got it right. Yeah. Uh, you, you've got books to write, you've got things to do. What comes next? Um, there's nothing, I haven't got anything planned. I, I'm on the board of an international uh, tennis board. Yeah, you're on the basket with like, basketball. And the National Basketball League. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. So those two things. And exciting be times because the, the sport is, again, after 20 years of, you know, being in the humdrum and, and it seemed to have lost its way, there's a new golden generation of young basketballers Absolutely. who are making a tremendous impact in the NBA, which is the biggest marketplace in the world, yep. and they could be playing for the boomers yep. when it comes to the Olympics and then yep. and the World Cup, which is fantastic stuff. Yep. And, and I think sometimes uh, people forget that, that um, sport, for all the reasons that you know it's been true and close to our hearts forever, yep. it now has a commercial dimension. So it's got to be profitable and it's got to end up um, paying off on investment. You've got to get that return on investment from sport as well. But all the basics about it, you know, the engagement, the, the health, the fitness, the, the community spirit, the relationship, it's all still there, oh, yeah. but it's much more complex than it was in the past. Uh, as we close this interview with you, and we'd love to talk to you for hours. In fact, you should come back, you should do another one. Um, and I'm serious about that because there's just so much, you can't fit a life so rich with so many different moving parts and give it full worth in 10, 15 minutes. Um, but the, what are the life lessons that you can pass on to young policemen and women for today and tomorrow? I, I think you've yeah. learned at the, at, the, at the coalface and also at a different time when things would have been harder and Salvatore had to become self quick. Yeah. <clears throat> I, I think the first thing is that uh, do something that you love doing. Don't take a job on that pays better or has a title or a nice office or a nice car. Forget that. That's a waste of time and you'll never get that, never get that back because I think as you get older, you realise how important time is. Don't waste your time. So remember the dinner parties that you go to and you go because it's the right thing to do. Don't waste your time because you don't like the people that you go. Forget that. So learn and embrace it. I, I can tell you the very first homicide I went to and the learnings that I had out of that because it's so clear in my mind how that set me up for, for different things. For what was to come. Absolutely, and, and things that you don't turn your mind to because you can't. Mm. You can, uh, I'm not a, you know, uh, a law enforcement TV program watcher because it's full of BS. It's different, yeah. But this, this well, is Well, they've got, a, they've got a, an hour to sell the story, so, yeah. you know, unless it's a part two. And, yeah. and that's what I got. So, you know, when I got to Australia Post, I delivered mail on a push bike. When I went to Telstra, I, I got my confined space training so I can go into the tunnels under Melbourne and have a look where the cables are. Just embrace all of that. Just learn as much as you can because it's going to help you down the track. I can't wait for the book. <laughs> have you got a working title yet? <laughs> well, my fa I've got a, a title for my father's book. Which okay, this is Guido. Yeah. Guido, about his life because he was born on okay, the streets of Okay, what's the working Naples. title? For his, is true, no bullshit. <laughs> because... That's, that's my father's philosophy. He would tell you that, you know, he told us he repelled the Germans out of Naples who were driving through in tanks because the kids were throwing rocks at them. There you go. And then we go, Dad, that could have happened. He go, it's true, no bullshit. <laughs> so that's the title of his. Uh, I, I don't know about mine yet. It's, I haven't uh, started on that yet. Sal so, uh, look, uh, please come back. Um, once again, an opportunity for us to say thank you uh, as members of the broader community in, the, in, the, in, in Victoria. But uh, as, a, as an Australian who has uh, more than served his time and put back into the community, again, a, a terrific uh, thing to see. So many uh, of those good deeds have been rewarded and the accolades, I think, have been worth it. Um, was there one thing that you'll never forget that maybe was maybe the highlight and the low light before you go? Um, I, I think the thing that's, that sticks with me most and. and it's how precious life is. I've watched a number of people die in my arms. Uh, I've watched people killed for nothing more than a couple of dollars they've got in their pocket. Uh, and it, it kind of makes everything into perspective. Mm. You know, all the things that we, we worry about and all that, they're not an arm or a leg. These are serious things. You could, you could lose your life tomorrow. So when you wake up in the morning, you're already in front. Make Correct. the most of it. Beautiful. Sal Perno joining us on The Informer and giving us uh, something to live by.